Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Stalker Clear Sky. Last time, we arrived in the Cordon, and now we're basically doing busy work for Sidorovich to get information out of him, which means we still have one more military commander to eliminate before we can finish interrogating the other military commander that's already been captured by the loners. Hope that covers all of it. Now they're already under attack by a squad of loners, so we should be able to pick them off while they're distracted. Okay, I think that was both of them. One of them's still on the map, but I think he's downed. So we'll just ignore that guy. Now we don't want to rush in here too much, because there's still three or four guys that can kill us pretty quick with their SMG assault. Weapon. Right behind this truck for cover. Now I promise that this whole game isn't just random gunfights without much context. We just haven't really got into the main plot yet. So. We're still stuck to shooting random guys instead of fighting mutants and finding secrets. Okay, I think there's just the one guy left. I could be wrong though, so I'm gonna go up this ladder and get the drop on him. Sounds like the loners are still shooting at something. Oh! Alright, I was wrong about that being the last guy. Seems they're all holed up in here. That could have gone better. Oh, son of a bitch. Situ situational awareness is not something I seem to have. I cautiously want to say that was the last guy. The music faded out, so that must have been the last one. And, uh, let's see. Only two of the loners survived. Don't break up! Great! is gonna change his tune now, that's for sure. Mark, and then to the base. Ooh, what's this? Balancing automated parts. I don't know who that's for, but that's for one of the technicians. Gotta make sure to search all these bodies for their stash locations and their AK ammo. Sometimes there's just like a random dead guy here. I don't know how he gets there. Unless he's getting shot through the wall or something. Oh, there's another stack of AK ammo. And a, I believe this is a fully repaired one, but we don't really need a 74U. It's not nearly as good as our AK-74. Which is a little weird. It's kind of strange that they give you a fairly good assault rifle at the beginning of the game. Don't be a jerk. Holster your weapon. We might have a conversation if you hide that weapon. This guy is blocking my access to those two grenades. I'm listening. No, come here. Stop standing in front of that shelf. So ah. tell me, what's up? Alright, we're not getting those grenades. Now, normally this is where I'd have to cut and uh, walk back to the loner base, but because of the guide system, we can actually just teleport there. Lead me to the neutral base. It's also nice that the neutral base and the rookie camp where Sidorovich is only cost 60 rubles instead of like 1800, since you're going to be going there a lot. You might have saw him for a sec, that guy sprinting past at full speed was uh, Father Valerian. 
since we triggered his script to go over here. See what being stubborn gets you? Your friends are dead and you're still here. No one's coming to save you. Tell me where you hit the case. Okay, I tell you. Bastards. It's at the old mill, under the roof. Would you look at that? The little shit cracked like an egg. <laughs> the stash coordinates are in your PDA. Take what you find to Sidorovich. He's waiting. Well, wow, this story's finally got a damn good ending. Now the army is going to stay behind the outpost for good. Now this is the point where we could decide to join the loner faction. Which means we'd have to take the fight to the bandits. However, we're not going to do that in our main playthrough. We're actually not going to join any faction in our main playthrough, but I'm going to do separate little uh, faction videos to show off the missions you do for them. So... We'll be covering that separately. So now we've got the information, but we actually have to retrieve the package. Which is... Oh, huh, that's weird. I guess it changes, because last time I had to do this, the package was actually in this little building across the street. But now it's over at the mill. Which is good, because there are some bandits in that building, and nothing at the mill. I'm listening. You've got something to say. And lead us to the mill. Uh, not even sure what's on here, actually. Let's try vehicle station. Mm, close enough. And once again, the dynamic music seems to have got stuck on for some reason. One thing that... Oh shit, lightning. One thing that you notice a lot more in Clear Sky is that there's a lot of little bases like that tent there because of the roaming bands of faction members. Just a neat touch. It makes the zone feel a bit more alive. Which actually brings up an interesting point I haven't talked about yet. Similar to Oblivion and Skyrim's uh, Radiant AI system, where all the AI have their own goals and daily routines and everything, and they kind of go about their business whether you're there or not, Stalker has a A-Life system that runs all of the uh, NPCs at the same time. So you can see, like, even though we're not near these mutants, they're just kind of wandering around doing their thing. And uh, this doesn't just count for the map you're in, because, you know, that would make sense if it's just the map. It's actually running everything in the zone at once. You can see all the NPCs up here in the garbage, the next area we're going to need to go to. And we can actually just, you know, bounce around from area to area. You can see all of the NPCs doing their stuff, going about their routines. Now this means there's a bit of unpredictability and stuff like, uh, you know, quest NPCs who get themselves killed because they're out in the middle of nowhere and they decide to attack a band of roving mutants. But I think it's it, it adds a very nice air of life to the zone. This plays into the faction system, but like, a, like we saw in the first episode, or second episode rather, the faction system is annoying because it means infinitely respawning NPCs will continuously attack points, even if you're not in the same map. So, if we were part of the loner faction, they were getting attacked, and we were in a different map, they would be yelling at us to run all the way back, otherwise, you know, that point might get captured while we're away. Which is why the faction system is a pain in the ass. Uh, now, he said it's in the old mill, but did he say where? It's probably upstairs. Oh, shit. There it is. Oh, gamer, can't be waiting for you in the case. It's helpfully titled Loot in our inventory.
See, this is a really nice effect that's added by Clear Sky Complete. Just look at how foggy it's gotten. Because of the rain. That doesn't happen in normal Stalker. I don't know where these guys are going. The ALI system at work. These guys are just running off to do something. Maybe they were looking for cover from the rain. Also, something else that's added? Uh, you can see how slick their jackets are. That's something that's not in regular Stalker either. Just nice little graphical details like that. And before we head back and deliver the case, there's actually one more thing we need to do. We remember that we took a mission from a uh, military stalker hiding under a bridge who said, you know, he was Kalitsky's driver, the guy who got captured. And his friend died in an anomaly, got trapped, and starved. Now that case is up here, but uh, well, we're going to have a bit of a problem retrieving it, as we'll see. Nope, this is not one of my cars. Sounds like the loners got in a fight with something. Probably the bandits across the street. Anyhow, since it's a bit of a walk, and uh, I don't feel like, uh, you know, making you watch me walk, we're going to drive instead. I figure since this doesn't really give us much of an advantage, since, for example, you can't actually run people over with this, uh, driving from point A to point B is a nice compromise. Classy bandit. Alright, here's the... no. Ugh, okay. We'll just park here. Oh, did a bunch of parts just fall off our car? <laughs> I'm not sure why that happened. But, uh... I'm sure it wasn't important. Alright, so there's Buddy there. We just gotta go up to him and take his PDA off of him. And there's not even any monsters, so we just run right in there. Oh. So, I guess this is why he got trapped in there and starved to death, because every time you try to get out, he would just teleport. Now you can try running in here from all different angles. I even remember some guy said he uh, he did this by just throwing grenades at the body to knock it out of the trigger point. Because there is a certain point here where it will trigger. You know, slowly shuffle up to it. There's actually no way to get into this tunnel from here. We have to go somewhere else to get in here. Where those dogs come from? Oh well. Oh, the engine stalled. These cars are really, really unstable. Sometimes they'll just shut off the engine when you're trying to drive up a hill. Uh, let's not get stuck on these dogs, because they can actually kill us while we're stuck in the car. But even so, they're still really handy for just driving around. We need to get somewhere quickly. Since you spend a lot of time just running in Stalker. Oh, shit. Oh, God. This is bad. Well, I mean, it's close enough to where we need to be. Now, these are supposed to be the loner's snipers, but for some reason they have shotguns. Anyhow. If we go up here on this train bridge and we climb to the top, you can see there's actually an anomaly right there. A big bubble. Now, I don't know how you're supposed to know how to do this the first time, because, uh, you don't see anomalies like this until later in this game, and they weren't in the first game at all. But basically, you walk out here, and you just, uh, take a leap of faith. And bam. We're in the tunnel. sorts of bandages and such. Why did he starve to death? There's a can of food in here. You fool. Takes PDA. Alright, now we just gotta... Well, and then we get teleported out. Now we just gotta go turn in our missions. 
So we're gonna hop back to the uh, the underside of the bridge where that military guy's waiting. All right, let's dump off this guy's PDA. And all he gives us is a shitty med kit. I guess that is really all he had. Well, it sucks to be him. Alright, finally we can deliver this case and be done with Sidorovich's nonsense. So you got it after all. I knew I could count on you. Thanks for returning the case, Merc. Now I can settle up with my client. The reason I've survived in the zone as long as I have is that I always keep my word. You screw a client in this place and you're pretty likely to find a knife in your back real soon. Anyway, enough about me. About your stalker, he was here. His name is Fang, and he was looking for tube amplifiers and some other electronic crap, but I'm not an expert in that sort of thing. I sold him the amp, but I didn't have the other stuff he was after, so I told him to visit the diggers at the garbage. Recently, some stalkers at the garbage have dug up old buried equipment from after the accident at the Chernobyl NPP, and now the place is filled with all kinds of ancient components. Look for him there. And remember, if you want to trade, I'm your man. If you need anything else, you're always welcome here. I'm extending you a lifetime store discount for helping me deal with the military. Don't just stand there, eh? Huh? Discount doesn't sound terrible. However, Storovich doesn't really have anything we need, per se. He does have this, the barrel suit, which is one of the better armors in the game. However, even with the discount, it's still going to cost us... Come on, tell me what you got for me. You can see there, the base value is 12500 and he's charging us 21000 So, uh, yeah. We're not going to deal with him and his ridiculous prices. Hello, anyone home? Good luck. So, now our only mission is to go to the garbage. Oh, actually, I forgot we had this uh, mission as well to pick up this guy's old detector. But since that's on our way anyway, that'll only take a minute. We'll just use a guide to get back. I'm listening. Lead me to the neutral base. Mm, sounds like trouble. I actually don't remember which stalker we got this uh, detector mission from. It's also a stash right here. Let's check it out. Ugh. Pretty awful. Nasty rads up here. Oh, jeez. Didn't see that. Alright. Oh, shit. Ah, fuck. Luckily, we still have some vodka and anti rads. Oh, fuck. Oh, that almost killed me. I have a bad tendency to get very uh, reckless when I'm trying to escape an anomaly field. Oh, and the lazy bastard is just one of these stalkers. Didn't even want to go 10 feet to pick up his old detector.
Do you got something to say? Say it. Where did this guy come from? This is a much better loaded out stalker. I'm listening. What he's wearing right there is an exoskeleton, one of the best armors in the game. Come on, pick up already. He's also got, I believe, that is a Pintores. Yeah, I don't know where this guy came from, but he's one of the higher ranked loners to have gear like that. Hmm, I guess I was wrong. The guy who wants his detector back is back at the other village, so I'm listening. let's just pop over back to there for a second. I'm all ears. This guy? Come on, spill the beans. And then we have to go back to the other village to collect a reward. But we have to go back there to get to the garbage anyway. Lead back to the neutral base. So a lot of these type of missions are, you know, kind of annoying, but they're basically fetch quests just to get some more money. I'm coming, I'm coming. I do find their new system for rewards kind of annoying because basically, whenever you do one of those kind of missions for factions, you have to go back to their merchant to get the rewards. Got something to sell? I don't know, what can you offer me? What do you have for me? Basically, Come back nothing. later, I might get a new shipment. Ooh. It's got something new an L85. However, he doesn't have any. Oh, no, he does. He has a little bit of ammo for it, but uh, this ammo is not nearly as common as this ammo, which is used for all the uh, Russian guns, whereas this is used for all the NATO guns. So uh, we might pick one of these up later, but we're not going to get that much use out of it. Actually, since it's getting dark, before we go to the garbage, we're just going to take a nap on the floor here. Because uh, running around in there at night is not fun. Huh. Inventory, sleeping bag, use. And it is currently 1957, so I say 8 hours should be enough. Full night sleep. Oh, it's still dark out. And it's raining. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I miscalculated. We'll do another two hours. It doesn't have to be too bright out, just it'd be nice to be getting brighter rather than darker. Alright, so now we'll just head to the uh, exit. Thankfully we don't need to do that guide nonsense for every new map. Oh, this whole hill is radiated. This does lead to the... okay, yeah. Now we could go the long way Vasily, through here. remember how you promised to get me some shooters? Not that I mind, Valerian, but think about it. The army's going to wonder why I sold weapons to stalkers. And you think about this, Vasily. If we don't put some heat on those army boys now, they're gonna bleed us dry. I'm listening. All right, Valerian. Tomorrow my man is going to bring you everything I've got. So tell me what... <laughs> Not really, though. Brilliant. Mm. He wants us to do this medkit quest. Does he just want one of the bees? Or does he have a specific one I have to pick up? Yep, he wants me to go break into the military base and take one of their medkits. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that later. He 
You think these guys might, you know, do something with their dead friends or whatever, but I guess not. There's also some dead bandits here, which are probably coming from the garbage, because that's where the bandit main base is. I just picked up... Ah, oh, does this bandit have an AK? We don't need it anyway, but we'll take his ammo. Oh, maybe we don't need his ammo. We're carrying a bit too much, actually. To the garbage. And here we are, in a dark tunnel. Slightly irradiated. And, oh, oh god, I didn't notice that we were about to die. All right, Why don't you holster that weapon and get your butt over here, old man? Now the garbage is a bit of a weird area. Basically, there is mounds hey, of irradiated crap everywhere. at the ground and stay nice and still. Now oh, shit. Add the boy. Now just. Die, you. All right, we, we went through the wrong uh, map location, so we're just gonna run back and go through the. Other All right, we seem to be trapped in a conflict between the bandits and the stalker. I'm not the one, the one. However, since we're not actually hostile to the regular bandits right now, they won't shoot at us, so we're just gonna go straight through. I hope we don't get robbed. And here we are, and it seems there are no bandits on this side, which is nice. Why don't you holster that weapon and get your butt over here, old man? Spoke too soon. I don't know if there's hey, any way to avoid this. Freeze! And we don't to even have think shot. of touching that shooter! Stay right there, old man! And he's trying to steal all our money. Great. Add the boy. I don't even have the now option to say no. Stay right there. Move, damn it, move! <laughs> well, that's what I, what I expected to happen. All right, so the the peaceful method didn't work out for us. Uh, we just got our money stolen, and uh, I'm not going to stand for that. So we're gonna kill all these stupid bandits. Listen, we need to talk. Just put that gun away first. Ain't giving away my cash to no freeloading bandits. Hey, buddy, put your shooter away and come over here. We need to have a chat. Apparently, they're not bothered Throw by the some fact. Balls and get your ass back here. They're not bothered by the fact I threw a grenade at them. Good. Listen, we need to talk. Just put that gun away first. How about this? Serving ammo. We've got plenty. We've got some pretty good cover back here, too. There's a guy right behind here. Oh, now they're asking for my help. This is the, this is the guy telling me to help them, and now he's thankful that I showed up. Stay on the ground. Now he's thankful that I showed up. Moron.
Well, we're not going to be too buddy-buddy with the bandit faction now, but that's kind of unavoidable, even when you're not involved in the faction wars. Now one smart thing you can do before that is actually just spend all of your money on upgrades before going through here, because if you have no money, they don't seem to care. They just want to take the money that you do have, but if you have none, they're just like, well, well you're just a shitty stalker. Oh, I guess that guy died because we failed that quest again. Let's try to get out of here before those guys show up. Now, unlike the cordon, the garbage is absolutely chock full of mutants. Not very strong mutants, but there are a lot of dogs and boar and flesh everywhere. Which is nice in that it at least distracts bandits when they're chasing you and you can just run through a field of, uh, mutants. Oh, shit. Now there's a chemical anomaly field here, which means there's probably an artifact. However, this stuff will chew through our armor every second that we stand in it. And we don't really have the money to afford, uh, repairs. Oh shit, oh god. I was not expecting snorks here. Okay, this might be a bigger problem than I thought. Snorks are one of the tougher mutants. They're basically just crouching men with gas masks. But they can leap like 20 feet or so right onto your face. Nasty little buggers. Oh no. I hope that is not what I think it is. Okay, good. It's just a couple of flesh. I thought there was something much nastier hiding in those woods. Alright, we're supposed to go see these diggers about Fang. But, uh... Seems like someone else has already come seen the diggers. I gave Fang the component we found in the cache. He wouldn't stop swearing and said he wouldn't pay us until we found the other components. We discussed it between ourselves and decided to send Vasya to speak to him. Vasya is one silver tongue son of a gun. We figured he might be able to talk Fang into paying us at least some of the money. I just hope he doesn't run into trouble on the way there. Alright, so now we're gonna have to go talk to someone else to find out where Fang went. As many quests in this go. However, I think that'll do it for episode 4 of Let's Play Stalker. I almost said Shadow of Chernobyl. Stalker, clear sky. Next time, we'll uh, find out where Fang went and, you know, try to find out more information about this group of stalkers. Until then, I've been Shadefire, and I'll see you next time. And remember, watch out for bandits on the road.